Hello everyone. Today we have a Pioneer T1000. It's a really cool deck and looks very nice from a very perspective. Uh, here is a compartment so deck can move the tape, it's place the complaint that there is no high frequencies. That's where we will be looking. Uh, heads looks pretty fine. I don't see any significant wear, as you may see yourself. The shape is round and nice. So I will open it. Uh, I just received it uh, idler tires that I was waiting for. So, and I have bells already. So let's be pull up tape transfer to let's see what's going on with this guy. See you soon. And here guys, I removed tape transfers. Uh, procedure is a little bit uh, extensive. It's required to fully remove uh, front panel uh, to get access and pull up the transfer to the front. So, but it's doable, it's two screws from each side. Uh, two screws to tape transfer underneath, two screws into plastic piece, and two pins here, uh, and four screws to the tape transfer here, and we can remove this part. I was careful and I removed the uh, aluminum part first before uh, working with the plastic pieces. Okay? So, and this door is disconnectable, so there is two clothes on each side, uh, which uh, connects to the door. So, as complicated as this, I would not say it's easy. In Sony decks, we can just use four screws and remove the transport. Okay, moving on, let me see. I, while I was disassembling, like, uh, I found multiple screws are not fully tied uh, on tape transport, so I believe it was serviced, but not successfully before. Let me see what I can do with this season. Well, guys, I saw that some of you may be interested. I just started this assembly. I pull out these three screws here, and it's the first one here. Just for the case, uh, if you're don't find my other videos. I'm already been doing this a couple of times now. Gently, uh, here we need to release these wires. It's not original tie. Let me remove it. Now we have access. Oh, it's it's tied up. Gently. Oh, this spring here. Okay. As is. And we can put it aside. So unfortunately everything is soldered. And we cannot disconnect. So this belt is good. It's tight and stretchy. I, I see like that this belt was replaced as well, but the other one looks suspicious for me. That's why I decided to open and see what's going on there. So next we have to, oh, now it needs bigger screwdriver, different size everywhere. We need to open capstans, it's three screws. Now we should be able to pull. Oh no, one more here. Uh, when you don't work with them frequently, the same models, you may forget where the screws are installed. So this is pretty ridiculous how it's everything tight. Here. That's where we get to the belts. 
This is not stretchy. It's a, it's a, it's sticky. So if it was replaced, it was quite a long time ago. And let's see the other one. It just sticks to cup stuff. <laughs> yeah, from it's not pleasant to touch it. Wow, <laughs> it's the cheapest Chinese belt I've seen. <laughs> wow, and it's sticky. Uh, sorry. I need to wash my hands like after that. Oh, okay, that's where like it's inconvenience starts that we don't have a proper access. We still need to rotate to open the door. Okay, I can probably do it like that. Hi. Door is open. Now we can pull capstans out. Don't like the system. It's not easy to work on it. Okay. Oil washer here. And let me see if it has one inside capstan. No, it doesn't. Because Capstan sits under angle and they always pull it back. So that's why. Okay, and the other one. I would not say that it's it's completely dry. It still looks more or less fine, but we will lubricate anyway. Now let me see. I have to reach to the idler and check if it was replaced or not so here is the spring don't lose it now we have to disconnect the spring here Work on this deck is not very convenient unless you fully disassemble everything. So it looks like idler never been replaced. The spring wasn't touched. I will disconnect it on the bottom. Okay. Here we go. Now. We need to rotate it 90 degrees, this black part, to release. Here we go. Now, you see, it's released like that. Turn right 90 degrees and locks will open. And here is the idler. Now, it was replaced. I see the touch on the lock again I like, replaced it far ago yeah it's already we can plastify it They just remove this door. It should be not a big deal. Yeah. 
and open it like that. And the small screw on the left side. Here. This small. Okay, and we can remove the door and it will open more space to work. And now we can pull up the idea. Have it. Yes, already cracks are around on this tire. It needs to be replaced. Done. New nice idler tire installed and it's proper size, so I'm happy with the quality. Okay, now it will be tricky to install everything back because spring will be pushing up and we have pretty teeny parts in a teeny space. Try a different way. done see when i use my finger uh, so the shaft will push in but the lock spacer uh, is plastic it will open and it will be pushed in position and it will hold now you see now it's not scrolls anymore okay why why it's not locked Another problem here. So. It should be locking in place, and it does not. Come on. Otherwise, it will be pushing to this uh, front cover and it will have not necessary friction. Okay, let me see how to open it and not break it up. Here we go. Now, let's assemble these parts. Okay, and now this tiny spacer lock it was not installed properly 
is that so you can use just finger like that now it's holes in place I, now I can close the cap and now it's nice I, good this one is good so here front side you can install brakes back like that and springs I will pull the camera and zoom in after I assemble so you will see how it all looks together but you can, can refer to my other video really I did it a couple times already okay here we go that's a close look so see here is the two springs attached here then this size brakes you see and here is the lock so when we rotate it to 90 degrees right we can pull it up and there is either right there so down here to install this pink and close it down for this part now the door and fix this small screw on this side here okay done I will trash this guy Now we can lubricate capstans and install them back. Mm -hmm. I so like new lubricant on the box. It's fresh. Now let me pull up the belts.
Something, something wrong. Let me see. This one. Yeah. Look the right one. Can you see how straight it is? Okay. And this guy will go here. To this motor. So it will be 116 and 98 half ounce and millimeters. So why everything is so scrambled? They did it. But I like the idea of having two belts. Uh, from my experience, like when we have two belts, they reduce wall and flutter. So, for example, we should take, uh, I believe, uh, Sony TCK670. This has two belts and it has like uh, almost twice less wall and flutter. Then the other one, which like 650, for example, which has just single belt. And my other Pioneer, which has similar tape transport, with this belt we get 0 0.027, I believe. That's it, really cool. So let me see. Oops. Just lost the grip. Let me find my tool. Here. Okay. 
I need to open it again. That's how they did it, it's ridiculous. Sony put holders for the belts, so you can assemble and then gently slide them from this like, post onto the motor. I haven't seen any other company which was so carefully thinking about assembling process. And now let's go straight and smooth. Next part would be pretty exciting. This every time this gets into this position. Okay, closed. Now I have to make sure that marks are here. There you see the small tooth here. There's a cut V shaped. And technically, they are not exactly much now, so let me, let me set it. Here. So, when this cut is horizontally, it looks straight here. Then the hole in this gear, which is right here, okay, should be like 90 degrees as well. Left, okay, now let me see. Oops. Okay, done. So now it sits, and now we can close carefully. Need to make sure the position of the port will, will get in place. Now see the door is closing. Done. Now we can assemble. No. 
not, somehow not full of seats. Uh huh, yeah, here again. Now it's full of seats. Right. Now I can use two hands. Done. This part is assembled. Now we can zip tie the wires like that. Not far ago, I got a thousand <laughs> zip wires because I use it already. I believe a couple hundred, so decided to go big. Now remember what we forget to do. Clean up oil from the shafts of the capstans here. But before we need to put washers. So believe this is the left one. The right. So this is the left one. Now the right one. And now we can clean up the oil. I will be rotating cup stands with my finger. And there is one. Okay. Next, let's see what we have here. Technically, heat is, is fine now. Let's pull up the heads. Uh -huh. Need to install it here. Close position heat is fine. I mean height, sorry. Still trying to improve my pronunciation. Yeah, height is correct. 
so tape pass is good now we also can see how far it goes let's, let's pull up the tape heads back okay let's play back position now let's measure yeah it's fine so here you may see that heads sits on the minimum position but it's still fine good so if the pass is correct that's a good news now the only thing is to demagnetize heads to make sure we can safely assemble everything back Last touch. It will be convenient to see how tapes will be sitting, how tape will be sitting on the heads. And this looks fine. Let me change zoom. Hope you can see it. Okay. Now let me assemble transport back and let's see what's going on, what else. See you soon. Hey guys, while assembling, I was shocked when I found that capacitors are technically not connected. This one either. See? Okay, I would need to see what is going on here see you soon here guys i'd like to show you how much this assembly needs to be done just to pull up this uh, this board i've already been assembled this front panel but i had to disconnect it back because uh, this shaft has a stopper ring here and it cannot be pushed front at the same time the board cannot go back and like this was a uh, stuck here so and you see the wires here from the power transformer so <laughs> those uh don't have connector so really okay in this version they even have the power supply for the dolby s board okay connected with this gray plastic connectors and the in 1100 it was improved but this 1000 is is something okay moving on like to see what's what's done there see you soon well guys i'm installed uh two new capacitors so those two on power supply was cut so i'm slowly assembling everything back it will take some time uh, but it looks like everything else is intact so let's see let me assemble and let's see how it will perform see you soon hey guys finally i assembled everything 
and I can run the tape so you may see so rewind fast forward and it's place the only thing that uh, definitely there is no high frequencies yet that was my would be next step I'd be working on I have to make a little break and walk my dog but then I will return and continue so it's just like 100 screws in just single deck you have to like disassemble everything if you need to do something it's pretty hard to work uh, design as I did but that's what we have with this deck same similar like a CT42 and like uh, all this TS770, CT95, T1000, T1100 all the decks from this generation have this design and like I want to work on the tape transfer you have to disassemble lots of parts why right. let me work on it and I will let you know what I did see you soon hey guys I just check it up the face face is correct but uh, signal losing like let me see it's, it's coming up I will tell you how much. My understanding is that more than 10 decibel. Okay, going back. Yeah, it's more than 10 decibel on the amplitude. So I see it's a level, and it's not even and the like 3 kilohertz, 4, 5, 6. You see, it's already losing much. Seven, eight, nine, ten kilohertz, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, like twenty decibel loss. Oh, yeah. that is unusual uh, with this shape of heads. I believe I would need to check and reproduce the same fix I applied for eleven hundred when there was a bad capacitors. So let me see this one. And here, guys, I'm looking into the head, and as you may see, that it's it's like new. So there is zero wear. And I check it up. So after the first amplification, before all the chip on the playback amplifier, we already have a significant loss of the high frequencies. And here is the playback head. So you may see a gap right here. It looks like new, really. I'm not sure what's going on. It was sitting for too long, I believe. Okay, let me see and think what else I can do with this guy. Okay, guys, here I'm continuing tuning this deck. I'm just installing uh, one flutter tape. Uh, speed was low, it was 2930, so I just adjusted it between 3003 3004 gears. And uh, Wawin Flutter average has 0 0.05, which is perfectly fine for this deck and this age. That's a good news. Uh, next, I will be testing um, already set up levels uh, for the playback. And azimuth, so next I will be tuning recording. So we may see uh, what it comes to is a uh, normal tape. So let's see how disbalanced it is. So no any information stored. So we have zero level here, 400 hertz. Let me switch to 400. 400 hertz, and we started recording. And you see how it is balanced between two channels. And the same picture we observe in here. So right channel is off. So they both should be plus two decibel. That was how I learned uh, when I was working on the my new CT42 deck, so adjustments is here, right channel, increasing to plus two, good, 
even and we have plus two here now let me see uh, minus 20 decibel level and let's see compare 10 kilogears uh, bias is a little bit of 12 15 okay. I would say like on 12 kilohertz, we need to add bias a little bit. And bias adjustments are right here for normal tape. We need to add to keep it in plus three decibel range. And the other one. Now, when they even between left and right channel, our automatic calibration system should do a perfect work. Right. Something gets really wrong. I see it tries to find, but it cannot. So probably output levels are wrong. You see error. So, looks like this output levels may be wrong. Let me check. Maybe this model is different from CT42. I may see, I may try to set level to zeros. And let's see. In my experience, it always gets level like two decibel lower than needed. Okay. Now we have something wrong, so. Type one, it was just recording fine. Let me see, let me reload the tape. So, yeah, now it's fine. 400 gears, 10 kilogears. Something gets really wrong with the bias. Right. That's why it, it cannot set proper bias. Let me try again. the plus three here and plus three here Fine. let me try again yeah this works now Seven increase in bias. Mm -hmm. It's probably we can go with bias more conservative. Uh, let me see. Let me start recording. So here 12 kilohertz. So it keeps so this tape perfect. And 400 gears, it keeps it perfect. Now we see that this records on normal tape up to 17 and a half kilohertz perfectly well. This is a good balance between left and right channel. All right. And I'm already set up uh, the generators, so let me show you. So three three buttons to be as a mod, mod and source tape. So that's the first generator. It's 400 gears. Let's just drift it a little bit away. Okay. 400 gears, three kilo gears, and on 15 it should be minus three, and it's now minus two. Okay, it's drifting a little bit. Uh, it's very sensitive. Okay, again, 400 gears, 3 kilohertz. And 15 kilohertz. 
Yeah. And reset will get out of this mode. Now let's do BLE again. And I believe we need a little bit work with the bias more. And let's show that nothing changes. Alright, so it still tunes perfectly well and level and in a bias. Okay. So, uh -huh. so I need to click one more time to build the data to clean it up. So technically let's see what we will be recording. It's a little bit higher on the levels as we tune it up, but it's now like plus three and a half decibel in the case. Two. That's why it's drifted. Oh, let me see. We need to make plus two on each channel. Uh, now when we get to 10 kilohertz, we need to keep the same plus two bias levels. Even. And now we should have a perfectly nice plus two decibel chart. Okay. And now we can run uh, to BOE. And it should keep it in the middle. Or like plus one. Oh, it gets far away for some reason. Okay, let me play around with it, and I will let you know what can. Hello again, and here I'm continuing. I'm tuning to all three tape types, and the last one is playing TDK May, and that's the maximum I can get from this deck. Uh, despite of the low wear, the head condition was uh, visually good, but uh, results uh, were discouraging, so I had to uh, do a light lapping uh, it's improved it like it was dropping minus 20 decibel on 15 kilohertz so with light lapping it did uh, minus 8 to minus 6 decibel drop and then I had to install uh, correction capacitors in a parallel to the head to make sure that we will flatten up so playback frequency response is good till 15 kilohertz and recording is good till 17 18 kilohertz now and then we still have some drop and i cannot fix or cannot correct it so and here is a bailey data and that's how it's work i did my best with this deck that's the maximum we can squeeze out of this deck here all right and I, comparing to CT42, I had to make even levels, like uh, without belly, and then I, it perfectly works with belly. So all of this deck is, is it's making me puzzle. It was minus two decibel levels so on most of them. That's where I like, the only way was to compensate is to increase record levels by plus two decibel. Right now, I, I'm, I'm quite not sure this deck performs really linear, like uh, it has exactly the same level as like uh, after calibration, proper level, as we were setting up like without calibration. Um, okay, that is what it is. All these automatic things are good while the deck is new. When the deck is old, I would prefer manual controls. Uh, but still, it's a really beautiful deck, so there is no scratches, it's it's come up pretty nice. Okay, uh, the last step I would be checking DolBS and levels and make sure that everything works with DolBS because it has uh, playback and record ports separately. And that would be it, and I will close and make you a demo how it sounds. See you soon.